Let's take a look at Teams conversations through a logical architecture. Now, there's a number of components that you can see on this slide. If we start here with the user, notice that the user is capable of doing a number of different functions inside of Microsoft Teams. This includes the ability to chat. Chats themselves take the form of messages as we trace along here, right? Inside of these messages, we would have the capability of placing images if we so desire. I could paste a picture in, for example. That's an inline image, as we see here. But I could also have the opportunity through a one-to-one -one chat to be able to share a particular file. If I were to share a file from the user's perspective, we would leverage OneDrive for Business for that. Now, in addition to utilizing peer-to-peer -peer and chat-style communications with multiple users, I also have the capability of forming a team. The team architecture, as you can see on the right side here, is actually anchored on a number of components. The first component being the modern group. As we'll see throughout this presentation, the modern group is foundational to utilizing permission services within Teams. In addition, as we create a team, we will also provision a SharePoint site. The SharePoint site maintains a repository for not only content such as news and things of that nature, but also hierarchical folder structure content. This type of content can be aligned to the channels that we create inside of our team. The channels themselves have the capability of mapping to these folders in SharePoint, thus allowing us to have containers for storage of files that we share within the team. But the channels also have the capability of providing a chat mechanism, allowing us to utilize a reply chain mechanism to be able to track threaded conversations within that channel. Also within a channel, we have the capability of interacting with tabs, which give us some extended capabilities and features within the team's client. 